Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. This is another uh, episode on uh, Inside Your uh, High Resolution Music. Uh, this time, uh, another sampler um, and format comparison uh, set of files from uh, another label that I really like. It's called Sound Liaison, as you see here. Uh, they have really, really well recorded music, and as with the 2L label, they're kind enough to provide a format comparison page and free content that you can download. So if you scroll down here, you'll see uh, the list of files that they uh, provide. A uh, little bit of nuisance in that you have to add them to the cart and go through the checkout process, but it won't ask you for any credit card information. So feel free to go through the process and uh, download these tracks. As you can see, the wide ranging uh, set of tracks from DXD at the highest resolution, and then downsampled PCM versions, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, following on with some DST files. I've gone ahead and, and uh, downloaded those files. Um, uh, bring it up over here. You can see them here. In the past, I mentioned how my uh, audio analysis uh, workstation software ad audition can't uh, open and manipulate um, uh, DXD files or DSD files. Uh, and to remedy that, I'm using a new program. Actually, the program's been out for a while, but I haven't shown it to you before. Um, it's, it's called Music Scope. Uh, I think the name of the company is uh, Zyvera or something like that. Just uh, Google uh, Music Scope and you'll find it. It's about 28 euros, I think, to purchase it. The test version stops at 30 seconds, which uh, makes it difficult to use uh, for this kind of analysis. So if you want to use it, you probably need to uh, purchase the whole uh, software for the 28 euros. Um, I'm not a big fan of the program. It looks pretty. It shows a lot of stuff, but for the type of analysis I want to do on it, this is restrictive. Um, simple things like there's no slider bar to go to different parts of the music, at least not one that I've discovered. And uh, things like analysis window are all static and that you can't rescale them easily. So not a big fan, but uh, it does the job in here. So let's go ahead and uh, bring in the high resolution, uh, the highest resolution uh, sample that they uh, provide at Sound Liaison. It's loaded into here. If we look in here, it says it's 24 bits PCM at, at 352.8 uh, kilohertz sampling rate. Uh, it nicely shows these uh, the bandwidth in the Fourier transform as uh, nice multiples of, of uh, uh, the uh, audio rates. So uh, 352.8 kilohertz has 176.4 kilohertz worth of bandwidth. And you can see where CD's 44.1 is way the heck out here. So with that said, let's go ahead and, and uh, play this. Um, <clears throat> so far, one nice thing we see is just exceptionally wide bandwidth uh, as far as like, spectral music. Uh, if you look, this looks like noise, but it actually oscillates up and down with the peaks. Doesn't do it all the time, but uh, uh, it doesn't look like pure noise to me. Now the levels are very low at 100, uh, uh, minus 100 dBFS, but uh, it's still, we see content. You can see even out here, all the way up to 176 colors. Um, we see content, but a remarkable thing just happened. Let me pause this. Notice what happened. We had a very nice, beautiful exponential decay, but then all of a sudden, all this nastiness popped in. We got this peak in here, this one, this, all this nonsense, really true garbage popped in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, play this again so we notice it. But again, look in here. This is what I was saying, example of very pure, nice, clean music. Everything's correlated. Uh, there are no extraneous peaks uh, in here. We can see in our s spectrogram, the heat map nicely fades into nothing here. Uh, there's a line in here, but uh, otherwise uh, looks very clean. Notice what's going to happen in a, in a couple of seconds. Noise floor just went up. I know 
Ah. Did you realize what happened? The vocals came in. As soon as the vocal track was brought in, everything fell apart. Clearly, all this garbage that we see is in that vocal track. It was recorded separately, uh, probably, than the rest of the uh, band. And whatever microphone, recording technique, uh, ADC was used, brought in tons of garbage. It took a super pristine recording and immediately trashed it down, uh, objectively speaking, and with all this garbage. And the garbage now goes way down low. You can see that even uh, down here, uh, below 44.1 kilohertz. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake before. This is the bandwidth of uh, 44.1 kilohertz. CD is way out here. So for CD, it's probably okay, but for high resolution content, look at all the trash that we now have. None of this is correlated with our beautiful music that starts here and should exponentially drop off. We have all kinds of anomalies. If I continue playing this, you can see the anomalies show up in the heat map. All this garbage down here. So we now know what the problem is. Unfortunately, the folks that created the music didn't notice this. Uh, per my comments in previous videos, you know, we can't hear all this despite all the fanfare for. Uh, you know, using and buying high resolution music. We don't hear it, the producer doesn't hear them, so the garbage gets out. But, you know, they want to charge a lot of money for this content. It's their responsibility to clean it up and not let stuff like this happen. You can see how easy it is to uh, find this uh, kind of problem, just doing a bit of measurements and uh, bam, you know, just uh, you gotta be blind to not be able to see this. So let's go down to lowercase um, PCM uh, files and uh, unfortunately the same issue arises because all that noise that I was showing you was in this region. This starts off clean uh, as before. We've now chopped off half of our spectrum. Uh, we're at 88.2 kilohertz. Now you can see how high resolution all of this is. Remarkably wide bandwidth recording. 88 kilohertz of true music peaks. This is just unbelievably nice and high resolution if that uh, vocal track hadn't screwed it up. And here comes the vocal track again. Uh, all of this appeared. Notice that it's before she even sings, it's just when they bring in fading it up, uh, we start to hear all the, uh, see all this in, in the uh, in the noise of the background uh, that it brings. So I won't bore you, but you know, we can go all the way down to 44.1 kilohertz and obviously uh, that's gonna look fine. We just have a more detailed view now into the uh, spectrum of the music, uh, but nothing exciting. So I'll go ahead and stop this. Now let's look at our DSD and let's look at the uh, highest rate one that we have, which is uh, uh, 250 DSD 256 um, quad sampled uh, uh, DSD and let's play that and now we see uh, another disaster in the making so out here we have about 26 kilohertz worth of uh, useful music so a sort of sampling rate would be 50 kilohertz or so and then we see some nothingness here then we see garbage in here uh, you know, I'm at a loss as to how they managed to do this. Um, you know, I can see the noise shaping, which is, as I've explained before, uh, one bit noise shaping requires that we push up, uh, let me pause this, that we take the noise that's generated by having too few bits and pushing it up to ultrasonic. So that's understandable. But how did they manage to truncate all this stuff? above 25 killers uh, you know it's this is just not correct uh, something's really amiss in here the recording was DXD uh, what the format converter is doing is uh, your guess is a good mind look at how the music spectrum here in the heat map nicely shows in spectrum gram here where we stop right around here 
uh, and then we go to nothing and then we have this pure noise it's very very clean so we know it's noise so we're not getting high resolution anybody's praising this over the PCM uh, you know they need to go back and, and re-listen to the PCM because the PCM had gorgeous bandwidth all the way out here no noise shaping garbage like this uh, this is just really really puzzling uh, let's go to a lower bit uh, data rate the original DST64 and see what that does oh boy so we now see the same problem here uh, where again our musical information ends abruptly at uh, 26 kilohertz and all this garbage shows up uh, actually what I think they may have done is that they've taken a low sampling rate uh, PCM version and then upsampled it to DSD uh, causing this noise shaping to appear over here uh, but the original music content was already truncated you can see it in the history here uh, it drops off like an anti-aliasing filter would if we had resampled the original DXD so something's sharply bringing the uh, frequency uh, response down and uh, you know we're going back yeah it's about this is about 48 killer sampling worth of data you're getting plus a heap of noise uh, again folks that think DX, DSD sounds better they really need to go back to the drawing board uh, I don't care what they think their ears are telling them uh, if their ears aren't you know able to figure out that you know most of the bandwidth is cut and replaced with just garbage uh, I don't know what to tell them I mean uh, maybe there's some system out there that all of a sudden magically sounds better when you pump a bunch of noise into it but this is just not acceptable um, goes back to my theory of get the original let me do the conversion if that's all they've done is converted the SD64 themselves or any of these other DSDs let me do the conversion I could do a better job myself uh, if the original was DXD uh, 352 which I suspect it was um, then let me uh, do the chopping in this case I would have listened to it found where the vocal track started to add all that garbage I would then choose a lower sampling rate to truncate all that and uh, call it done so another uh, mystery here of how the production call uh, is occurring for uh, high resolution it reminds me of, of um, fear that the uh, TV broadcasters had when we went from high definition uh, from standard definition to high definition they said they had to remake all their sets because they all would look like cheap cardboard and cheap furniture that in the softer low resolution standard definition video was not visible but once you made it high definition all the warts came out and they had to really go back and make high quality stuff by the same token so much of music production today goes into low resolution uh, formats that all these sins are left on the table and weren't visible now that we want to deliver them you know we realize you know or people should realize how bad it is so anyway i hope you found this informative uh this is amir from audiosciencereview.com talk to you later in a future uh, video Bye-bye.